how can you tell a car is really good you want one despite its drawbacks this is the electric volvo xc40 recharge twin and i'd like one despite i'll tell you later A housekeeping note, this video appears on my new English only YouTube channel. All my reviews in English are now on this channel and hopefully so are all the comments, likes, etc. I created this English only channel for your convenience and because the old bilingual channel was underperforming because of the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe to this channel and as this is going to be a couple of rough months with the YouTube algorithm trying to figure out what's going on, I suggest you also subscribe to my newsletter in which I will only notify you about new videos and relevant reviews on this channel. No spam, link in the description below. Thanks a lot and now let's go for a drive. The Volvo XC40 is a compact premium SUV in production since late 2017. It surprised everyone, apparently also Volvo, when it won the 2018 European Car of the Year title. I drove the XC40 in the spring of 2018 and I got it why it won. With the right engine and all-wheel drive, the Volvo XC40 is an ideal blend of Scandinavian design, modern features, functionality, adequate performance and decent driving experience. I need to stress that you need to get this car with sufficiently powerful engine and all-wheel drive. In 2020 I found out how terrible the front-wheel drive version can be when I drove the XC40 Recharge T5, formerly known as the Twin Engine. Yes, Volvo started calling its plug-in hybrid Twin Engine, which kind of made sense, but then they rebranded it to Recharge as in Recharge from an electric socket. And the twin or twin engine is the name for the XC40 Recharge EV with two motors because there is now also a front wheel drive version. So someone didn't think this one through. Anyway, as everybody is electrifying their fleets, Volvo doesn't want to stay behind. It wants to lead by actually getting rid of the internal combustion engine by 2030. And by electrification, Volvo means going all out electric, not just offering hybrids, mild hybrids, etc. Going back to the XC40 Recharge Twin, this is Volvo's first full EV, even if it is based on the popular ICE model. Volvo tried to make the car normal enough to keep the mature buyers happy, but at the same time modern enough to make the mature buyers notice they're buying the future of mobility. For example, Volvo XC40 Recharge doesn't have a start button. Perhaps you noticed in the opening sequence, I just got in the car, put the car in drive and pulled away. There is no start button shot because guess what? There is no start button. This cockpit design debuted in 2014 with the current generation of the Volvo XC90. You'll find it in every relatively new Volvo model. Same display, same button, same volume knob, same gear selector. The central display is often compared to that in Tesla, even if it's not as big. However, the Volvo XC40 Recharge has something else new, that's the Android Automotive OS. New Volvo cars have been getting it for the past few months and reactions are… mixed. More about that when we stop. And one more Tesla-like feature, front storage known as the frunk or the fruit, if you're a Brit. When designing EVs, many car makers seem to forget that charging cables are, at least for now, an essential element of the car. Most of us need to carry at least one, if not two, charging cables 
at all times. Perhaps you can leave the standard 230 volt cable at home, though I think with the current state of infrastructure in some regions, it would be wise to bring it along on longer journeys as well. And the Type 2 cable theoretically should not be necessary, but it often is, as many hotels, for example, offer a wall box, but without a cable. So you need a place to carry these cables. And I often said putting them under the boot floor is a bad idea because you'll have to get all the luggage out to access the cable in the underfloor storage. Moreover, cables are often dirty being exposed to the elements. Do you want a dirty wet cable in your clean boot? I think not. That's why the frunk is, in my opinion, a must. BMW and Mercedes trying to prevent clients from opening the bonnet are just being stupid. Especially since usually there is space for those cables. I don't need to carry my luggage in there. I just need a plastic container, preferably with a drain hole, so that I can rinse it once in a while. Bravo! Hyundai, Jaguar, Kia, Tesla, Volvo. I hope I didn't forget anyone. If I did, I'm sure you'll remind me in a comment section below. Feel free to do that. 408 horsepower, 660 newton meters of torque. This means the car is not for sissies. Also, it can tow up to 1.5 tons. The Volvo XC40 Recharge can drive like an ordinary, albeit powerful XC40. Declared 0 to 100 km per hour time for the twin engine variant is 4.9 seconds. I got a fraction of a second better result on wet tarmac. Depending on the situation, so much power and torque is sent to the rear wheels that you can feel a faint oversteer. Just enough to make you smile, but not as much as in the BMW iX3, which you can literally drift out of wet corners. However, in order to make this feel more like an EV, you should check the one pedal driving option somewhere here in the menu. There, there it is. With one pedal driving, as you let go of the accelerator pedal, the car starts regenerative braking. And yes, when you cross a certain G-force, the brake lights will come on. The only other drive-related setting is the off-road mode. I did my diagonal approach test. This is not particularly challenging as an obstacle because with a bit of momentum I could drive a two-wheel drive car up this incline. The idea is to stop halfway when there is no traction on the front and rear wheel diagonally. In this situation the all-wheel drive system is put under more strain. The XC40 Recharge has two independent electric motors and traction control. From behind the wheel I didn't feel any difference between the normal and off-road mode. I had my foot buried in the carpet, but the computer didn't let the wheels spin freely. By the way, due to the batteries in the floor, the XC40 Recharge has less ground clearance than the standard XC40, just 176 mm. Back on tarmac, the XC40 Recharge doesn't feel like a 2 plus ton car. Compared to other EVs, including those designed ground up as electric cars, this is one of the best riding and handling vehicles out there. Visibility is the same like in the ordinary XC40, meaning average, but the soundproofing is great, something that cannot be said about the PHEV variant of the XC40. Okay, I said everything that's good about the XC40, and now let's talk about the bad stuff, and we'll start with range. The XC40 Recharge has 75 kWh batteries, that's a bit more than in the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and slightly less than in the Kia EV6, Skoda Enyaq or the VW ID4. We're talking about the big battery variants. Volvo just has one battery size. Theoretically, range should be above 400 km combined. Theoretically, the car can charge up to 150 kilowatts, which gives you 10 to 80% state of charge in about 40 minutes. Charging at home, depending on how you charge, takes anything from 8 to 70 hours. However, I assume buying an EV, you'll make sure you can get at least 7, preferably 11 kilowatt charging at home. And now reality check. I don't know what's Volvo's range estimate because the software needs updating. More about that in a moment. However, according to my calculations, with the outside temperature around zero degrees Celsius, 250 kilometers is a safe guess. The lowest energy consumption I got was around 27 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. In the city with recuperation, this could mean about 300 kilometers but that was an extra urban cycle, 
So around the city, I was getting about 30, so that's closer to 250 kilometers. Charging even from a slowish 50 kilowatt DC charger was below 50 kilowatts. Around 60% state of charge, the Volvo XC40 took just 34 kilowatts. I'm using the same charger for most EVs I review and I know it can spit out high 40s. I assume slow charging could be related to weather and or poor battery management. And now let's talk Android Automotive OS. It could be very good, but for now it's average. I'm not sure whether it's the problem on Volvo's side or on Google's side. I would like to stress here, I understand the challenges which car makers and software developers have to face to deliver a safe and useful product. Google knows it's sat enough, but it needs to take data from the car to actually deliver a useful product, useful information. It's cool, I can easily pair my car with my Google account and get access to my recent destination search history. Thank you, thank you. But that's not enough. For example, let's go back. Uh, I don't have all my apps. I can use Spotify or maybe YouTube Music, which I don't like, but there are no Google Podcasts here for Android Automotive. Why? I don't know. So the only thing I can do is pair my phone through Bluetooth, stream the music or podcast or whatever, and hope it doesn't lose connection, which it does at least once a day. Also, I didn't find any range information anywhere in the car. The only thing I get is uh, the percentage of battery left if I reach one of my destinations. If there is a charging stop needed, it will also suggest a charging stop. But I'm the one who has to do the math to estimate the remaining range in kilometers based on my battery size, etc. Also, I couldn't find any information about the driving style, how to be better. So the only things I have is um, off-road and one pedal driving, and that's it. Also, I don't think so much small text on a screen is a good idea. What's wrong with icons showing various driver aids? maybe in the context of the road, like VW or Renault, they've got it figured out. Now, the driver display either shows the map, which is okay, or big black hole, which is less okay. Perhaps something will appear there. With the long-awaited software update, Volvo promised a significant update in autumn 2021. I'm recording this at the end of December 2021, and there is still no update, and Volvo, at least Volvo Poland, has no idea if and when it's coming. On the plus side, Volvo fixed something I pointed out in the V90 Cross Country review a few years ago. There was no simple way to access the camera view, which would be useful, for example, when driving out of a garage. Now, as you slow down below a certain speed, a camera icon appears on the main screen. It's very useful. In the front, I like the little trash bin. I also appreciate large door pockets, decent sized glove box and average sized storage under the armrest. In the back, there's the same amount of space as in the regular XC40. It's adequate. You get AC vents as well as two USB-C ports and a pass-through to the boot. The armrest also features two cup holders, but the rear door pockets are small. In the boot, Volvo managed to keep the regular cars 414 liters above the double floor. Due to the electric motor, the underfloor storage is not particularly usable, although you can fit a parcel shelf in there and the floor folds to create a cargo barrier as well as three additional shopping bag hooks. That's something other car makers could copy rather than do their origami Mazda. Prices of the Volvo XC40 recharge start at 45,000 euro for the front-wheel drive 231 horsepower version in core spec. With all-wheel drive in the top ultimate spec and with options, this test car costs about 61,000 euro. In the beginning, I said a good car is one that you want despite its drawbacks. For everyone, these drawbacks can be different. For me, in case of this car, it's the range, charging speed and the current version of the interface. So that's pretty much everything. <laughs> I know the regular Volvo XC40 is a great car and it has the potential to become an equally great EV. With that said, I know I'm making a big mistake because you should always buy the product as it is, not what's promised in the future.
And how do you like the Volvo XC40 Recharge? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.